there's a difference between raj through and desh through so even when you raise a voice against the policies of the government you raise a voice against the government not india you cannot equate the two we need to think beyond this right wing and left wing wing politics there's one group that loves modi ji beer biceps curly tails many other youtubers and there's another group that will hate modi ji tavish kumar dhruv rati but in this loving and hating of modi ji we have casually forgotten the most important group a group that loves india that a group that we should belong to of course our country has many problems and it is my country i'll solve this, these problems some problems at least if not all and the first step to solve many of those ills is to educate our citizenry in logic and rationales leader on top is nothing he is an enlarged persona of its citizenry why because that leader derives his or her power from you and through you their goal is to win elections and their seamless winning of election will take place as long as that leader enjoys the support of its citizenry of course i have spoken of the ills of this government in various episodes you know i've done that but wherever credit is due let's give that only when people officials bureaucrats whenever they have the right incentives only then they will succeed of course these officials should be criticized traumatized for their bad work but at the same time they should be appreciated if there is some good work happening in certain industries and sectors you will all be joining indian foreign services or indian administrative services not modi ji's foreign service or rahul ji's administrative service if you were to ever come back to power so please have this spine to stand up for india and in the time you will realize that constitution of india is giving you a lot of rights and privileges to stand up to these politicians don't be a spineless bureaucrat making reels on instagram entry exit video nonsense be a misfit in a country where everyone is putting in some kind of narrative be a misfit who stands for india now coming to today's class we'll begin today's class with a twitter post i want you to look at that post and then tell me your thoughts okay and before that happens let me give you some caveats the first is that boss for this class and for next three classes we will be going slow the reason is simple we cannot compromise on your foundations there's no need to do crash courses there are so many of you who would have taken or attended polity in various classrooms and still if you were to go through your you know upsc question paper you will find it difficult to get to the right answer comprehending question is easy but getting to the right answer that becomes difficult and therefore i don't want you to you know to be in that crash course mindset where you're just wrapping up syllabus you will need to focus on your foundations foundational affairs so let's uh, begin today's class with a twitter post and look at it read it and then tell me your thoughts can you read this also read through the chart what is its state so this uh, just for the fun sake i also downloaded this chart and the source is world bank look at india look at bangladesh look at turkey look at vietnam look at china how can we not discuss economics when we are studying politics we need to have some opinions at least on these things economy impacts our lives actions and actions of our governments will affect our life and i think in one of the tweet it was mentioned that india's true manufacturing rival is vietnam not even china so any opinions on it See today and for the rest of our lives we have to make one promise no matter what we will never be a blind supporter of any political party or any specific leader at the same time we will also not blindly hate anyone ravish kumar barkha dat arnab goswami we need to think beyond their one sided polarizations our rationality it should be decided it should be dictated by what's good for india and what's bad for india see the biggest ills of india is this business of doling out labels and why not the moment you say anything in favor of bjp you are against labeled as bhakt the moment you say anything against bjp you will be an anti indian so in this pursuit of doling out labels by some idiots india is losing badly india is losing its social fabric and in time to come india will also lose its identity we should not be in blind love of any leader at the same time we cannot blindly hate one specific leader we are and we will never be a spokesperson of bjp or congress or aam aadmi party but we have to be spokesperson of our country india it is this india that needs to be preserved at any cost it is a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic of india for which you have to live you have to die and work for of course our country has many problems and it is my country i'll solve this, these problems some problems at least if not all and the first step to solve many of those ills is to educate our citizenry in logic and rationales leader on top is nothing he is an enlarged 
persona of its citizenry. If citizens want riots on daily basis, that leader will ensure that India orchestrates the best riots in the world with a lot of efficiency. If citizens demand reservation and caste, color, sex, gender, religion, even the way you smile, the leader on top will ensure that he or she divides the country to the best of its ability. But if its citizenry demands jobs, if they demand education, if they demand quality air, if they demand good people occupying important positions, in that case, leader on top will ensure that you have the best job, best education, and you have the most incredible people occupying important positions. Why? Because that leader derives his or her power from you and through you. Their goal is to win elections and their seamless winning of election will take place as long as that leader enjoys the support of its citizenry. But sadly, what is happening in this beautiful country is there are blind hate or blind love for this leader, for this the leadership of this country. Today, I don't even have to watch a few videos. I can tell you very, with, you know, with ease that, you know, Ravish Kumar or Barkhadat, they sit on one side of the spectrum. Perhaps they are there to just figure out flaws with the present regime. On the other hand, there are right-wingers who are blindly loving Modi ji, no matter what the government does. We need to think beyond this right-wing and left-wing wing politics. There's one group that loves Modi ji, Beard Biceps, Curly Tails, many other YouTubers. And there's another group that will hate Modi ji, Ravish Kumar, Dhruv Rati. But in this loving and hating of Modi ji, we have casually forgotten the most important group, a group that loves India, a group that we should belong to. What we just saw in the form of that Twitter screenshot, it's a live demonstration of that India. Why? The spokespersons of BJP would say that, you know, these international organizations, their data is baseless. They are anti-Indian. We should ban them. We all have put a word of those things. How can World Bank put something like that? Look at Pakistan, compare that to India. If you hate India, then go to Pakistan. And then there's another group shamelessly stating that India's manufacturing value added is at par with Sub-Saharan Africa. India should not even dream of competing with China. It is Vietnam that is our competitor, not China. Whatever this government is doing, the leadership is doing, it's absolute nonsense. This is not the India we should create. We should aim to create an India which is based on rationality, science, logic, not in loving or hating one specific person or party. If your leader does something remarkable, appreciate that. But do not just merely cherry pick data to bring someone down. Many of the IS officers I know in the Ministry of Commerce and the MEA who have done remarkable work in their works and aspects with Vietnam and whatnot. I'll tell you about that. But don't cherry pick data just because it serves your interest, because your interest ruins my interest. And my interest is not your political master's interest, be it Rahul Gandhi ji or Modi ji. It has to be with India. Let's relook at that chart again, because this chart is going viral. Now you have to identify the problems with that chart, giving you some hints. And I'm not in favor of that chart at all. While looking at this chart, many people have commented that Modi ji is nothing but marketing and branding expert. By the way, that is not a bad thing. You need marketing and branding to sell the story of India. Nothing wrong with that. If you cannot create a good perception about your own country in the world outside, why should you be in power? Because if you cannot brand your own country well, then who will? Will Chinese come and brand your country? Will Pakistan come to create a good PR for your country? No. So marketing branding is incredibly important. Nothing to make fun of. It's important not, not just for the investor sentiments in the stock markets or in the private markets, but also for tourist sentiments. So there's nothing wrong in marketing your country well. Coming back to the chart, there's one section who will say that Modi ji is nothing but a marketing guru. Look at this chart. It reflects Modi ji's policies. We are at par with sub-Saharan countries. We can't even compete with Bangladesh or Vietnam. Forget about China. But the reality is different if you had looked at the chart and the comparison clearly. Manufacturing value added percentage of GDP is what was written. What does that mean? Today's India's GDP is almost eight times the size of Vietnam. Almost eight times, roughly, the size of Bangladesh. Four times that of Turkey. How can you casually ignore that aspect in cherry picking your data? How can you ignore that Vietnam and Bangladesh have a weak service sector in comparison to India? Both of these countries have always had a strong emphasis on, on manufacturing. The service sector in India is more developed and therefore it is natural that manufacturing contributes a larger share of its GDP in the case of Vietnam and Bangladesh comparison to India. How can we casually ignore the fact that made in Vietnam is basically made in China? Why? Today, Chinese companies have significantly invested in Vietnam. They have set up manufacturing units there. Why? Because producing and exporting goods in Vietnam it allows Chinese companies to circumvent the tariffs that were imposed and that are imposed by Western countries on the Chinese made products. So for Chinese, it makes a lot of sense to have manufacturing setups in Vietnam. And therefore, it's this argument that you know, made in Vietnam is basically made in China. Vietnam has trade agreements with numerous countries and blocs, and that provides Vietnam unfettered access to various major markets. And Chinese companies are leveraging those agreements to export goods from Vietnam. India is also investing in countries like Vietnam and Bangladesh also for similar reasons. India is also taking enormous benefits out of it. 
I visited a few countries of ASEAN last year. I could witness the benefit of that policy. India's pharma companies, they have increased their presence in Vietnam. Why? Because it allows them to take advantage of lower tariffs in the pharma products category in the IFTA. This allows India to then export medicines to ASEAN countries more competitively. India is doing something similar via diversifying its automobile manufacturing basis. Just by looking at one chart, we cannot make such conjectures. Because they are just barely cherry picking data. They have not even spoken to a single official in the Ministry of Commerce or, or External Affairs Ministry or Ministry of Finance and the back channel diplomacy that we have been orchestrating. I agree a lot of things that happen in India happens because of politicians, but bureaucrats also play a relevant role, important role. Here you are, what, what are you doing? You're basically cherry picking data and making nonsensical claims about India. If we do that, what incentives would Indian leaders have if there's this ridiculous cherry picking of data? Of course, I've spoken of the ills of this government in various episodes. You know, I've done that. But wherever credit is due, let's give that. Only when people, officials, bureaucrats, whenever they have the right incentives, only then they will succeed. Of course, these officials should be criticized, traumatized for their bad work. But at the same time, they should be appreciated if there is some good work happening in certain industries and sectors. Let's not be in that habit of bringing down India all the time. Just in your pursuit to set a different narrative all the time. Why? Because you hate one person, one ideology. So let's not be blinded in our hate or blinded in our love for the government of the day. Our love should always be preserved for special people. And that special person is not Modi ji or Rahul Gandhi ji. It has to be India. So the way we cannot be blinded in our hate or love for the government, similarly, we cannot be blinded in love or hate for our constitution. Despite its beauty, even our constitution will have flaws. So whatever is written in the constitution, it's not just, you know, a remarkable thing. Of course, our constitution makers, they had remarkable foresight, but there are some flaws even in the constitution. And let's be open to talking about those flaws as and when we proceed in the journey. So during our journey to analyze this constitution of India, we need to promise ourselves that we won't be blinded with our biases. India's leaders should be third order thinkers. The first order thinkers are the trolls that you see in your YouTube comment section anywhere. They think only in terms of immediate hate or immediate love, blinded in love of a leader, hate for a leader. Second order thinkers, you know, you see them on your screens. Ravish Kumar, Parkhadat, Arun Goswami. These are the people who manage the emotions of first order thinkers. But the folks in Ministry of Commerce, the folks in the MEA, doing those track two, track three diplomacy, they should be third order thinkers, where they're not blinded by love or hate or a leader or a political party. Whatever conjectures they make goes on to make India. And that conjecture, those conjectures should be based on logic, rationales, facts. And that is what we must promote and preserve because that is good for India. It may not be good for the ruling regime, could be Congress or BJP, but we are not their spokesperson. You will all be joining Indian Foreign Services or Indian Administrative Services, not Modi ji's Foreign Service or Rahul ji's Administrative Service, if he were to ever come back to power. So please have the spine to stand up for India. And in the time, you will realize that Constitution of India is giving you a lot of rights and privileges to stand up to these politicians. Don't be a spineless bureaucrat making reels on Instagram, entry, exit, video nonsense. Be a misfit in a country where everyone is fitting in some kind of narrative. Be a misfit who stands for India. In this journey of analyzing Constitution of India, we will realize how Constitution gives spine to not just civil servants, but also regular civilians who may be citizens of India or who may be residents of India. There are many foreigners who live in India, the residents. They will also have some rights. It is constitution that gives us spine to raise our voice against the atrocities of the government of India. By the way, it should be very clear to you, there's a difference between Raj Dhru and Desh Dhru. So if and when you raise a voice against the policies of the government, you raise a voice against the government, not India. You cannot equate the two. Many are equating the two. That is wrong. Millions have forgotten that. So with this idea in mind, we began the beautiful journey of analyzing, understanding India's constitution in the previous episode. In fact, the previous episode was the first episode in truest sense when we looked at something which is actually a part of the constitution of India. What was that? 